Shalom, shalom. Um, I wanted to really quickly come and speak to you guys about the end time prophecy that is right now being fulfilled. I need you guys to understand how important this is. Very important, very serious. All the things that are written about hap that would happen in the last days are right now unfolding every day, every second of the day. Things in the end time prophecy are being fulfilled. And I want you to understand this. Understand it. Hear me good. Hear me good. Hear me with your spirit and not with your mind. Hear me from your heart and not with your mind because sometimes the mind can play tricks on you. There's so many things you see, so many other things that are happening, so many things you have been taught, the traditions that you have learned, you have to put that all aside and hear me with your heart and with your spirit that is inside of you. Um, so now I want to take you to Matthew chapter 24 when it speaks about how the tribulation, so people think that we will not be um, living in the tribulation period. That's what's important right now. You will not have seven years of great tribulation to change your mind and decide that you want to serve Jesus. That is Satan's deception. Satan wants you to think you have a lot of time because he doesn't want you to change your ways and live for the Lord. His whole job and mission is to keep you away from heaven. His job and his mission is, is to keep you out of the kingdom of God. So he's going to do everything he can to make you think that you're doing everything right to make you think you are on the right path because as long as he makes you think that you're on the right path the longer you will walk down the wrong path because you don't think that you need to change you have to pay attention this is why it says satan deceives the whole entire world he deceives you how do you deceive someone you deceive someone by making them think something is true that is not true that is deception if you knew that it was deception you would would never be deceived in the first place. You have to be lost. You have to think that you're doing it right. In order for you to be deceived, you have to pay attention. But like I was saying about the tribulation period, in Matthew chapter 24, it states that immediately after the tribulation of those days, then that shall they see the sign of the Son of Man coming with clouds from heaven to send his angels to gather our elect from the four corners of the earth. That is after the tribulation period. So we will live through the tribulation and we are in the great tribulation right now. Just because you don't, it's not the way that you think it's supposed to be with beast and everything locust upon the earth right in front of your face you don't see it but these things are here already in the spirit and that is what you're not understanding there is spirits there are spirits all around who are causing havoc look at the way the government of the united states has been crumbling down you've never seen the government the way that it is now you've never seen division inside of the government the way that you see right now you have never seen two different presidents at the same time like like you see right now, Donald Trump is still the president of the Republican Party, whether you want to accept it or not. They follow what he says. He rallies all the time. He speaks to them all the time. That is who their president is. They even still address him as president. Their, Biden is not their president. There are two presidents in this world, in this country right now. Don't you get it? Don't you see that there's division? Don't you see that we are already in a spiritual civil war? Don't you you see that we are constantly in battle with one another good versus evil armageddon is unfolding every single day in this land of america and in joel 3 it spoke about one place the valley of jehoshaphat being the land where the judgment was going to take place where the war was going to take place and it is right here in america i always tell you guys it's right here in america because this is where the free where the slaves the captivities have served for 400 years, like it says in the book of Genesis 15, that the captives, the seed of Abraham are going to serve in a strange land that is not theirs for 400 years. And then at the end of the 400 years, I will come and judge the land that they had served. And it says in Joel 3, that in the valley of Jehoshaphat, there will I sit to judge all the heathen roundabout. So it's only one place. God never came for the whole world. He's in one place at, at a time. 
together one set of people, one nation of people. And that's what you have to watch for when you hear all these people claiming to be the Christ, claiming to be the Messiah, claiming to be the Lord or the chosen one, claiming to be the bride of Christ, claiming to be me. When you see all these people saying that, you have to hear what they're saying and pay attention to what they're doing. If they don't have one nation of people that they're coming to save, if they don't have one nation of people that they are they are, they are focused on and gathering, they can't be the bride. They can't be the Messiah. They can't be the Lord. If they're trying to just save anybody who listens to them, they can't be the Lord because the scripture and the prophecy specifically says that one nation of people were going to be saved. And that is the remnant of the house of Israel. That is the remnant of the tribe of Judah. That is the remnant of the seed of Jacob. They are the ones who will be saved, not just anybody. I have always been the God of Jacob. I have never been the God to the whole world. And you have to understand that. So like I said, if they're not focused in on one nation of people, they can't be the Messiah. So for those who keep saying, well, if you were the Messiah, if you were the Lord, you would be bringing unity in all the world with everybody. You wouldn't just be focused on just black people. That's not true because in Matthew 25, it says the son of man is going to come to divide his sheep from the goats, divide his sheep from the goats. That means cause division, cause separation, gather my sheep and put them on my right hand and leave the goats on my left hand. So that is the vision. I came to separate, just like Jesus always told you, to come out from among the world and be ye separated. Come out from the world. Don't do what the world does. You are not of the world. You are in the world, but not, but not of the world. So I am separating my sheep from the world and I'm gathering my sheep, just like the prophecy says that I would be doing. And the reason why you know that the son of man is one of the two witnesses that will be coming and that is already here to speak or the Christ or the son of man, whatever you would like to call me. Here in um, Matthew chapter 12, it spoke about the son of man being dead for three days and three nights. Jesus did not fulfill that prophecy. He was only dead for two nights. He rose on the third day and then, and so he didn't fulfill that. So there's a person who's going to come in the last days and be dead for three days and three nights. In Revelation chapter 11, I told you guys this before, but for those who have not been on my channel long and have not heard me say this, I'm going to break this down for you. In Revelation chapter 11, it speaks of about after the two witnesses are finished testifying, then it says that the beast is going to ascend out of the bottomless pit and, and um, make war with them and kill them. Just like I just said, we are in war right now. This is the Armageddon, battle of Armageddon, good versus evil, spiritual war, last and final spiritual war of all times. So it says after the two witnesses are killed, then they will be laying in the street for three days and three nights. It didn't say that. It said three and a half days. That is three days and three nights three and a half days. So the three days and three nights is the prophecy of the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11, which means the son of man is one of the two witnesses. And you know that this, the one of the two witnesses is the Christ more specifically, because in Revelation chapter 20, it says after the reign of Christ, then will the beast be loosed from his prison in the bottomless pit, and he's going to come and make war, go to gather them together for battle. The, um, um, go for battle for the Gog and Magog battle, which is Armageddon, the same thing, the spiritual war that I'm speaking about. So that lets us know that the Christ who's going to reign is also the um, one of the two witnesses from Revelation chapter 11. Who's the other witness? The other witness is Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is over my nation of Islam, my black Muslims who will be saved. Why will they be saved? Because they have obeyed me. They have built up one strong, mighty nation under me. They love one another. They are a nation of peace and love. They take care of each other and they try their best to please me from their heart. They are serving a pagan God. They are serving Allah the stone, but they don't know they are serving Allah the stone. They have been deceived into serving Allah the stone. In their heart, they are worshiping me. In their heart, they are fearing me. In their heart, they're doing all they can to try to please me. And of course, all of them are not perfect. Of course, all of them are not doing the right thing, but the majority 
of them are. They are striving towards perfection. They are striving to please me. And that is what matters because I am a God who judges the heart. So for the Hebrew Israelites who refuse to accept that they don't have a savior or a God coming, I feel sorry for you because you are in for a rude awakening. Isaiah 65 and 15 says that I'm going to slay you and call my servants by another name. They are mine. They will be mine. I'm not taking you anywhere, not only because of what you did to my husband, but because you are hateful, you are proud, you dog and abuse women, you think you know everything, and you hate my husband Jesus with a passion. You think you can control God? You think you can tell him what to do? You think you can tell him who to choose? You think you can disobey him? You think you don't need a middleman? You think you can go straight to him and don't have to listen to anybody else? There are so many reasons why you will never inherit my kingdom. So you just better be prepared to burn in the pit of hell because I'm not taking you anywhere with me. I'm the last hope. The buck stops here. Ain't nobody coming to save you. I don't know who you're waiting for. I'm the Lord. I'm the Messiah. I'm the last hope. The Father has chosen and sent me. Whether you want to accept it or not, you are going to have to deal with that. And I feel sorry for you because you can't even see what's happening right in your face. The world is ending. The sky is falling. It's falling. And you can't even see it. You better wake up. This is your last chance and your last hope. The Lord of heaven has spoken.